going to be a style video that we're going to do, and it's going to be answering a question. Yeah? So, yeah. Um, we've got lots of questions lined up. The first one was, how do we get into sailing? The other ones we have are, why do we move from land to sea? Where have we been? Where are we now? Where are we going? What lessons have we learned? What current challenges do we have? Would we do it all over again? Mm -hmm. Did we find what we were looking for when we first set out? And of course, the big one, how we finance the boat in the beginning of our journey and how are we financing it now? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, I wish I had the absolute answer to that one, but one day, yeah. So we're gonna do these maybe once a week, see how it goes, see if anybody watches them. All right, Sam. Hi. <laughs> So we've had lots and lots of people writing to us lately, in fact a little bit too many because uh, we can't respond to them anymore, we're getting so many questions. Um, but a lot of people want to know how we got into sailing in the first place, like what happened. So do you want to start that story? Well, I started, I was in the army for six years and I got asked if I wanted to do an adventure training by moving a boat from the south coast of England up to Germany. Cause, um, the British military were in Germany and I was moving up to the Kiel Canal which was uh, very adventurous. I uh, almost hit a British naval ship in the first night of sailing. I got storm bound twice and um, going through the Kiel Canal we um, this big ship came round the corner and our engine stopped and it was all all panic stations as we were drifting in towards it but luckily we got it uh, started. How old were you? I was 18. Okay. So How did all, you get started? It, it all started when you were 18? Yes, it did. Well, for me, it all started probably like since a baby because we had a summer house on the St. Lawrence River, which um, is the border between New York and Canada. And so my grandfather built that house, and it was a tiny cottage, and we had motorboats, canoes, sailboats, we had everything. So I was always on the water. And um, I think for the most part, I was like a passenger and I really thought sailing was very boring. I was rather, um, I, I was very much more interested in kneeboarding, water skiing, and like going around looking cool. <laughs> <laughs> but then as I got older, I started to appreciate sailing more, even though I get seasick. As long as I stay in the cockpit, generally, if it's not too rough, um, I can enjoy a nice sail. And I used to sail out of um, the Rochester Yacht Club, and that was Lake Ontario. So that was a lot of fun. And then, uh, and then I met you. So how did we start? Yeah, how did we start? <laughs> how did we start? Well, I always wanted to go on a sailing holiday, so... Um, a friend of ours, a friend of mine went to the uh, boat show and um, we both rang our, I rang Kim up, he rang his wife up and said, how about a sailing holiday? And you went, yeah, let's do it. And so we booked a sailing holiday in Greece, I believe. Was it Greece? Yeah. Yes, it yeah, was. Yeah, the first one was Kefalonia. Kefalonia, that's right. And um, we decided to... Um, rent a boat for a week and uh, and that was like 15 years ago wasn't it yeah about that about 15 years ago so there was um two couples on there both of us none of us had sailed on our own at all and uh they uh said that we had to do a three-day flotilla course because it was on a flotilla holiday because we, we were a bit too scared to go bear boating at the time and uh and that's what we did and um, you take the course, and then I remember us flying down to Greece. Um, so that's us and one other couple. And I remember me and my my girlfriend looking at the boat, thinking, "We don't know how to sail that." <laughs> <laughs> no, it was in a beautiful it was in a beautiful place, which is Fiskardo, which is probably my f favorite village yeah. stroke town that we've ever gone to. Yeah, it's, it's in Kefalonia, and and me and my mate Tim goes, "Yeah, yeah, we can handle this. We can handle this." So it, how many feet was it? Was it? It was a a Gypsy thirty three, brand new. We were the first people to use it. And it's so they must have been mad to let us have it. <laughs> well, what's funny is um, it looked mammoth to us. Yeah. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, how are we gonna control something so big? <laughs> I know, I remember that. And both Tim and I go, yeah, we can. So we went out, 
and we looked at the wind indicator and goes, oh yeah, the wind's coming from this direction and so we put it into head to wind and started to get the mainsail up and I was thinking, this is difficult. I said, oh, it must be a new one. Is this when I looked at all the other boats and said, Simon, why are all the other boats going the other way? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we all went, oh yeah. So we turned it around and up it went really quickly. And, uh, and that was our experience. And our, first, our first experience. Our first experience. And both the girls looked at each other, shook their heads and went, oh my God. And I think they just had a glass of wine then. To, yeah. I think they needed it. But luckily we only had a seven mile sail, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, and the rest of the holiday or vacation, I mean, we had a blast. There was yeah. we didn't. There was no difficulties, and I think that's what's great about a flotilla is just there's a lots of boats and people around to help if you if you have a problem. And every time we went to like anchor or dock up, there was somebody there to help us. Oh yeah, I I would highly recommend it, even if you you've got no experience at all. Yeah. Because they just look after you so much, and the hardest part is is docking up. Especially yeah. in the Mediterranean, because you drop your anchor and you back up to the um, the jetty, the jetty or the dockland side there, and they're just absolutely brilliant. They tell you when to drop it. They're there to hold your lines, and as long as you've got the boat ready, you shouldn't have any problems. Yeah, and so like we did that after the first year. I remember actually us um, coming back. So after we finished up, we got off the boat and we were a bit sad. And I remember the car ride back to the airport it was quite a long ride. And I remember crying. Yeah. It was the first time I went on a vacation where I actually didn't want to go back to work or go back home. Because usually I'd get bored or, you know, I'd have enough of my vacation. But with sailing, I just didn't want to go home. Yeah. And um, as soon as we got back, we decided to book again for the next year. Yep. With the same couple. Same couple, so, yeah. Same couple, so we were still talking to each other after that. <laughs> yeah. But um, what was really funny is on the, on these flotillas that we have, they have um, a little mini regatta. They don't call it a race, they call it a regatta. And um, I'm quite competitive. And um, <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> so we... We were practicing and everything for the back. Me and Tim were practicing for the day before, and we were the most people that had the least experience. I.e., we it was seven seven days of sailing. That was well, our experience. That was our experience, and um, they decided to have this race, and uh, we were in the lead. And then this bigger boat was catching us up, and it was just first across the Rhine, no handicap system, but there was no wind. And he was coming up behind us and Kim goes, get ready to tack because we'll be on port tack. And I went, what do you mean we're on yeah, port and tack? I don't even know where that came from. I must have paid attention one of the times I went out as a kid because I really, I, I don't know anything about yeah. racing. And I was going, oh, oh, okay. So as the boat was coming up behind us, we tacked and he had to tack out. Well, yeah. And he had to tack in like towards the land too, didn't he? I can't remember. Something it, happened where it would really mess him up. It really messed him up because he was a bigger boat and yeah, it he was like a forty six foot and of course there were, we were doing like half, half, a, half knot a knot to a, a, a quarter of a knot. So we tacked out. We kept going. He stalled. We tacked back and crossed the line, which was about another two hundred meters, which took about another 10, 10, 15, 15 minutes yeah. to get over. I and, remember, I think you made us all go to the front of the boat or something. Thinking, no, that's what he was doing. Oh, he that, was making he all He was his... making all of his people go to the front of the boat. Which, so, uh, not much was going to happen, really. So we won the race, and um, he came up to us at the drinks afterwards, and the, after the presentation, and goes, oh, that was a fantastic move and everything. He goes, oh, how long have you been sailing? I went seven days. And he looked at me, and he goes, no, no, how long have you been racing? I said, no, that was my first race. And, <laughs> And, um, <laughs> First and he time goes, I captained well, the boat. Did, how did you do that? I said, oh, my wife told me how to do it. She'd done a, she'd done a couple of races, so she knew a bit more than me. He just stormed off. Yeah, wouldn't talk to us he after wouldn't talk, that. He wouldn't talk to us after that. And his wife came up his to wife, you, didn't she? Yeah, she goes, he's in the Royal Yacht Squadron, or not the Royal Yacht Squadron, but in really posh one. And he's going, M my husband is so upset. She goes, it's actually quite funny. But it's, <laughs> so she goes, you've actually made my day. <laughs> Yeah. So if, well, you, if think, you're watching this, I'm really sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but that got us hooked. That was yeah, our it, first time, and we went every year after that yeah. um, until we had our daughter Sienna, I think. Yes. Um, then we stopped. 
Yeah, and we did the we did Greece um, on the Ionian, the Aegean. We also did Turkey. Twice. We did the BVI a couple of times. Yes. Um, and uh, so that's what got us hooked. Yeah, that's what got us hooked, and uh, and then we we went on a couple of holidays without boating. And it was terrible. Yeah, and we I'm would sit on the sit on the coast and look at boats going by, saying, "Why are we on land?" Yes, and. I remember we were sat in this marina and Kim goes, that's a nice boat. Yeah, what about that one? Yeah, we're in this one. She goes, why don't we just buy a boat? And I, and I turned around and sort of looked at her and went, are you serious? She went, yeah. We yeah, love I think, boating. I think my exact words were either let's shit or, or get, get off, off the, the pot. pot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I went, oh, okay. So I started doing some research. And I think that was in August. And that led us that led us actually to our next chapter. Yes. And uh, we will talk, talk about, about that, that next. Thanks. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. I think it's working. Yeah, it seems to be. <laughs> All right. So, what should we say? I don't know. What do you want to say? Well, we should probably explain that we don't like looking at the screen at ourselves and trying to talk to it. Yeah. Although, if I just focus on you, I could probably talk. How do you feel? I don't know. Looks like my eyes are closing. <laughs> I know. I'm just looking at myself. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's why we... I can never be a newsreader. <laughs> um, Does that boil your weight? Okay. So, the reason that we put this together, this this um, 10 minute clip, is because we get lots of emails and we can't answer them anymore. Um I feel every night I go to bed thinking I have like 200 emails in my inbox and I can't get to them. Every day I do a couple more and a couple more and then 10, 20 more come in. So we're going to do hopefully some videos and maybe somebody will want to watch them. Yeah. And <laughs> if you have any questions, email us in. And... No, 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 don't email us. Uh... Well, how are they going to ask us questions then? <laughs> I don't know, but don't email us because I can't respond. Uh, maybe I'll see the email and uh, we'll do a video about it. So that's that what I meant. Okay. Or put a comment in the video area. That might yeah. work. Yeah. It's really hard looking at me on the screen and talking. I'm just looking at you. <laughs> You're much prettier than me. <laughs> so um, our got... life and our lifestyle and everything and. Uh, I love how you say everything. Actually, I, I don't. Saying, it drives I me nuts. Saying... <laughs> you keep going. Uh, well, what does everything mean? <laughs> Ah, oh, come on, Simon. <laughs> you just had a go at me, so it's my turn now to go at you. <laughs> okay. Am I blinking too much? Yeah. I don't, I never knew I blinked so much. I never knew my eyes looked like I was asleep. <laughs> I've always liked your eyes. Okay. That's what attracted me to you. They're kind of like Richard Gere eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do this to me? The lads are going to wind me up again. All okay. right. Okay. Hopefully we'll get a thumbs up instead of a thumbs down. Doing your thumbs down. Well, uh, who's out there putting thumbs down? The thumbs down. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to say? Bye. Bye. Subscribe now if you want to make sure to watch our next question answered video, where Simon and I talk about how our decision to sell everything and sail away happened. If you want to know why we sold up and sailed away, Purchase my book titled Changing Lifestyles, Trading the Rat Race in for a Sail Around the World. The book covers our decision to sell our possessions, buy a boat, and head west around the world. Covering 18,500 nautical miles, Changing Lifestyles describes what it's like to go from living on land to becoming a full-time liveaboard family. In March 2014, Simon and I left land with our, at the time, three-and-a-half-year-old daughter, to find a new lifestyle. We were in search of more family time, a less stressful pace of life, more fulfillment, and an overall better way to live our lives. Grab a version of the paperback or digital version of the book on Amazon or in my Sailing Britican online bookshop. Click the link above or find links below in the description area of this video.